Hello everybody and welcome back to Learning Language. Uh, this episode is called Conjugation and Translation. Um, in this episode we're going to talk about some just logical ideas about language in general and then we'll be doing some, uh, an example of translation in the French language. Um, I'll probably also just show you some general translating rules for specifically for French. Like I said, French is my best second language or other language. Um, but like I said, I know how language forms at a fundamental level so I can start deriving things immediately. Um, but we, we've introduced this idea, the fundamental stability of two, in, in my previous lectures. Uh, so what numeric statements can we make about sentence structure? How many sequential verbs are conjugated or unconjugated or infinitive or how many, is there one preposition, how do how prepositions relate to, to verb translations? Um, those are all open questions I don't know, like I said, I'm trying to figure out the right question anytime in scientific research. The, the, the big difficulty is asking the right question. Um, so we're just going to explore that with, with an example. I'll probably take uh, whatever the, whoever the French president is, uh, if I fo I'm follow him on LinkedIn, so I'll just take a post from him and just translate his post. Um, but we're going to explore that idea. English as a backdrop. <clears throat> the first thing I wanted to say for translation is being that we have the internet, we have cell phones, we're all interconnected and English is the, the language of science. When you're learning a language, in the same way that if you, you can look at a painting and understand and see the picture way more readily than you can paint. You can, under, you can listen to a piece of music way more readily than you can produ produce a piece of music. Um, same thing with languages. So, even if people aren't fluent in English, with English being uh, the, the language of science or the default language for science, um, people still have, like even on a personal individual level, if they are fluent in two, three, four languages, they'll fill in the blanks with English prepositions. Um, and I've seen that on Reddit. People will say, you know, I, 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 I'm a native Spanish speaker, but I often find myself thinking in English. This is why. And at the species level, it's because the, the internet is proliferated. There's no really, besides those handful of tribes, there's no sequestered groups of people. Um, and I wanted to ask the question, is English a new language, right? We, we introduced the Sumerian tribe or the Sumerian civilization. But the, the reason I ask this question is for geometry, physics, and the, the axiom of efficiency. There's for some physical or geometric reason, there's, we have a set amount of sounds we can make. Um, so <clears throat> there's got to be some, I, 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 don't, I, I don't know if English itself is a new language um, or if like maybe Proto-English or they had less verb forms or something, um, but very intuitively it strikes me that English can't be a new language. Um, Again, I don't know why, I can't prove it yet, but ing, what that ing do? English, ing, English. Um, so that logically introduces all of the English language. So now I can mathematically produce, like I said, for the it, it is what it is statement is the basis of logic. Well, now I've introduced the English language uniquely um, from, from a derivation. So now this validates all of my proofing. Um, but what that ing do? And I just have the UPS store commercial. Go turn on uh, the UPS, go watch TV, you'll see a UPS commercial, and it'll just put ing at the end of words. Putting an ing at the end of words makes it a verb. So what verbs are translated from non-English languages with the, the word ing? Um, and again, this is another thing I am not definitively sure on is because when I, when I read French, there's, it's very clear that there's some infinitive verbs that are translated as ing and some that aren't. Um, and it's natural for me at this point, I, I, I don't know why, I don't know, like I said, I don't know what the, what the, what the differentiation is. 
but that's what we're exploring. And what is verb sub subject agreement? Um, we, we've already covered typically a sentence introduces the subject of the, of the, sub of the sentence first and then the direct object. Um, conjugation in, in non-English languages um, introduces the subject. I don't think there's actually technically naturally infinitive verbs in, in the English language, um, but for verb subject agreement, any native English speaker, myself included, find myself double checking me and you or you and I for plural or singular, and that's very, very common. Again, just another very, probably the fundamental example of people misspeaking or misconjugating. So those are, those are the ideas I want you to have in your head, and now we're going to jump in and do some translations in French. So the first thing I do want to do is just for, if you're learning French in any standard class, if you're reading any other materials, um, here's a one-to-one. -one. Remember, all of our translations, we're going to do one-to-one, -one, syllable by syllable, word by word. Um, but anytime you're, you're looking at a verb form, these are the, so you can go look at the conjugations of the verbs, but passé, composé, as always translated literally as present, the present uh, verb plus have, imperfect, imparfait is always present plus was, pluparfait is present plus had, future, futur, present plus will, conditional, present plus would, conditional perfect, present plus would have, and subjunctive, present plus were. Um, like I, this, I had this written on a, a little cheat sheet note study thing. I don't use this anymore, but when I first was first learning French was my first uh, second language or other language, non-native language. So this is, this is what I use and this is for sure correct. Um, so, like I said, don't, cat, like I don't, I, don't I, I logically do not like the categorizations of composing verbs like this or conjugating verbs like this. Just go start with a sentence, go start with an ex excerpt, an essay, a post on LinkedIn, go start with someone actually speaking French or whatever language and just start translating it. That's, that's really the best way to learn. And just some examples, right, voila. People will say that all of the time in English without you know, demonstrably not knowing what exactly what it means logically, but using it correctly because context defines variable. So you tell me, what does voila mean? Look there. Voila, we've talked about dichotomistic pairs. Voici. Voila, voici. Um, look here, ici, here, look here. There, la, with the, the, the grave is there, look there. En suite. Go watch, go watch a, a real estate show. Go watch, go, go look for a, a house yourself. You'll see en suite and pied à terre all of the time. En suite is literally in suite. Um, oh, and you have a four bathroom, granite countertops. And now to sound smart, we're going to say en suite to instead of in suite because <laughs> bonjour. <laughs> Same with pied à terre. Foot to earth. Pied, foot, à, to, terre, earth. And, and, and in real estate, it's like right by the, the foothills or something. Like it's pied à terre is not, <laughs> is not specific. For, if I was going to buy a house and someone said, oh, it's foot to earth. Not, not really sure what I'm being sold. Au revoir. Uh, shit. A uh, le is o. Uh, at the, a uh, le is always o. Revoir. Go play NHL 2021 right now. Au revoir, monsieur puck. To the, to the revoir. There's no subject, revoir. To the re-seeing, voir. Seeing, revoir, to the re-seeing, till I see you again, paraphrased. Esque, this is how you introduce, uh, there's two standard ways of asking a question in French, um, as opposed to just intonation. 
um, that are typically taught in ESCA versus KESCA. I always die. I don't. I've never personally ever thought that the term KESCA at any point in my life. Um, ESCA is it that KESCA? I'm confident that the the apostrophe drops the wa the qua um, because what is it that? Esca's for sure is it that, Keska that is it that, doesn't make any sense, what is it that, introduces a question. So those are the two kind of ways you introduce a question in French. Um, those are some just standard things you'll hear all of the time that aren't translated literally. Um, and now this is a post from Emmanuel Macron, bonjour Emmanuel. Um, but in French, he had, this is just he has a this is just a post he put on LinkedIn. Après avoir vu votre message, message, je peux vous dire que la fierté de votre mère est partagée. Bravo à vous et à vos vos équipes, à vos équipes, équipes. And sorry, I, dude, I don't, uh, I, don't, I don't speak French that much, so if my, if the rhythm of my pronunciation sounds goofy, sorry. But literally, after, after having seen your message, I can you telling that the fierte, je ne sais pas, I forget, of your mother is shared. What is what is that? What is what is fierte? I don't know. The something of your mother is shared. One second here. Fierte. The pride. The pride of your mother is shared. Bravo to you and to your team. Teams. Now I'm just going to pull pull up the tra the the post on LinkedIn and read the translation LinkedIn translation software has. So their 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 translation says after seeing your message, and again that's theirs. So before we introduce a subject, all of the infinitive verbs are read with ing. A non subjugated verb is an ing verb. After seeing your message, I can tell you that your mother's pride is shared. And now clearly, logically, that makes more sense. But that is not what is written here. Right? In English, you would never say, I can you seeing that. But that is, that is what is written. So, I can tell you that... I can tell you that... I can... I can... Well, okay, so what I wanted to point out here is I would not, the, the literal translation, because the je peux vous, I can tell you, like, this is just a funky structure, but I, I, like, I personally don't read that with, a, well, I do read it with an ing, but the translation doesn't have, right, it doesn't say je peux, I can, you seeing, it says I can, or, or tell you, sorry, I can tell you that. Um, and that's just, oops, that's a, I just like to random guy's post, <laughs> but this is an, an infinitive verb, um, either used incorrectly by my boy Emmanuel, I think so, has to be, um, but I was trying to get an example of an infinitive verb not translated as ing, um, that this might not be the best example that the pride of your mother, let's keep going with the translation on LinkedIn, I can tell you that your mother's pride is shared, I can tell you that the, the, this says the pride of your mother is shared. Um, bravo, congratulations to you, and on here it says congratulations to you and your teams. Congratulations to you and to your teams. Um, so I just want to again keep pointing out that if you put in, get, when you're first learning, get a dictionary, get an actual dictionary, 
look up word for word in the dictionary the, the words you don't know and also type the sentences in, in, in into Google Translate. That is what I did. I think that's the best way. Um, yeah, and I'll do I'll do just we'll, so we'll be doing more more examples, but I'll hopefully get one a better example of an infinitive verb not translated as as ing if that's a thing, and um, again make some sort of numeric statement about the fundamental stability of two about the sequence of verbs about the sequence of verbs and prepositions. I don't know yet. Thanks for watching, learning language, conjugation, and translation.